there's any truth to the numerous reports of classic looking UFOs and aliens, how can we explain their relative similarity to us and the vehicles we use? The most interesting answer might also be the hardest to wrap one's mind around. The aliens are us. From the future. It's fun to think that we might someday conquer time travel and be getting glimpses of our future selves, and it does seem to answer many questions about unexplained phenomena. But time travel to one's past is pure fiction. Right? I've always thought so, but I recently stumbled on an old idea that had my head spinning for weeks. If you're able to achieve faster than light travel, no matter the mechanism, you can literally travel back in time. I've heard of this idea before, but at the time, I thought that any faster than light travel would require accelerating an object past light speed through space. An impossible task requiring an infinite amount of energy. Enter the Alcubierre Drive. With an engine built on this theoretical principle, the craft would never actually move through space faster than light, but instead, space itself would warp in front and behind of the craft, allowing it to ride the space-time distortion in its own space-time bubble. There is no issue with space-time itself moving faster than light. The craft can thus ride the space-time bubble at faster than light speeds to its destination, with nothing actually moving through space-time. Due to this technicality, this engine avoids the mathematical inconsistencies of accelerating an object faster than light. But this space-time hack does not avoid the logical inconsistencies that this travel would create. General relativity tells us that time literally stops if you are moving at the speed of light. If you are to somehow exceed the speed of light, time would be reversed. This completely unintuitive effect of faster than light travel is not an artifact of an impossible requirement such as infinite energy either. It is rather related to the actual geometry of space-time. To truly understand this takes some time, and I'm not sure I'm completely there yet. One of the fundamental concepts here is an implication of space and time being relative. The relativity of simultaneity. Two people with different velocities, different frames of reference, could disagree on whether two events happened at the same time or not. And as strange as it sounds, this is not just an illusion. They'd both be correct. Events would really happen in different sequences for the observers. This video does a great time of showing this with a space-time globe. As long as everyone has an apparent velocity at or below the speed of light, although strange, these shifts in space, time, and sequence cause no inconsistencies with cause and effect. Above light speed, though, it's another story. Faster than light travel would allow one to move to a different causality curve. Instead of just disagreeing on whether events are simultaneous or not, a faster than light traveler would disagree with others on cause and effect. And again, both would be correct. If you leverage these time warping geometries as explained in this PBS space-time video, you could literally travel back in time and visit yourself before you left. And this applies to any mechanism of faster than light travel, be it an Alcubierre drive or a wormhole connecting disparate regions of space. Let's say there's an astronaut Bob, and he's orbiting the Earth. To his despair, he sees a missile coming in to nuke the moon. Helpless to stop it, he watches for a couple minutes as it comes in and explodes, taking the moon out with it. Alice, another astronaut, is on an Alcubierre-driven ship that also has nuke intercepting technology. Having just made several FTL hops, she looks back at Earth's orbit and sees a giant explosion. Out of it, the moon materializes and a missile comes out in reverse. As strange as it sounds, both Bob and Alice are seeing events as they happen. 
neither is more right than the other. If, at that moment, Alice turns her ship around and goes as fast as she can, again, faster than light, she would be able to catch up to this nuke before it hit the moon in her frame of reference. And she could use her nuke intercepting technology to save it. But let's say Alice does this and the moon never explodes. What caused her to come back to the Earth in the first place? These weird grandfather paradox type situations would be commonplace with time travelers interacting with the past. But we don't see any glaring logical inconsistencies in our lives. We also don't see any time travelers revealing themselves and their technology to us. Does that mean that time travel and faster than light travel along with it are impossible? Maybe not. Physicists take these time-bending implications very seriously, and they have proposed several theories on how time travel, or in their terminology, closed time-like curves, might exist and be consistent with the universe we're living in. Stephen Hawking believed the universe would not allow time travel for anything but the smallest of subatomic particles. In his chronology projection conjecture, he posits that any such loop containing non-trivial energy would pile up and thus obviate whatever was causing the temporal disturbance. Alice and her Alcubia drive in our exploding moon example. Another leading theory is less restrictive. Under the Nabokov self-consistency principle, time travel to one's past is possible, but affecting the past to kill one's grandfather, save the moon, or any other paradox-causing event would be physically impossible. Formally stated, the only solutions to the laws of physics that can occur locally in the real universe are those which are globally self-consistent. This means that Alice may be able to travel back in time and arrive in Bob's frame of reference before the moon blows up, but despite her intentions, she'd be unable to do anything that would cause global inconsistencies with the universe. Maybe there would be a technical malfunction causing the nuke interceptors to fail. Perhaps, on arrival, Alice would have an irresistible urge to do nothing but sit back and watch the moon blow up. Or maybe Alice does save the moon but is able to smooth out the global inconsistencies of the universe by sending out a message, signaling the moon's imminent demise. This could be the alert that sent future Alice back in time to save the moon in the first place, eliminating the paradox of the time-traveling moon savior. Smoothing out these global inconsistencies would start to get exponentially more complex the more a time traveler interacted with their past. It's hard to imagine how something like a time traveler revealing themselves to society could reconcile into a self-consistent timeline. Instead, time travelers would be compelled by the universe to keep their distance. After either failing to save the moon or saving it and sending out a message that would eventually bring her back, Alice would likely feel the uncontrollable urge to invoke light speed and get out of there. Any meaningful interaction would be unreconcilable, literally impossible. Could this be responsible for the common trope of amazing stories of UFOs and aliens, but a disappointing lack of concrete physical proof? Robert Bigelow and the US government studied supernatural phenomenon at a ranch in Utah. Apparently, everyone there, Bigelow included, were convinced that there was something paranormal going on, but it always stayed one step ahead of them and eluded capture on camera or otherwise. Perhaps these are the shadows of time travelers. Self-consistent universes may exist where a select few do get glimpses of these temporal travelers, but only in situations where having seen them will have no meaningful effect on the universe, as in the case of unsubstantiated and widely unbelieved reports. While this might seem a convenient way to explain the lack of proof of such encounters, it is more than just a contrived concept. There are world-renowned physicists writing papers on this topic. Kip Thorne and Mike Morris have both co-authored papers with Igor Novikov, 
defending the concept. And it's possible that these theories may be put to the test sooner than we might think. While the energy requirements for building an Alcubierre drive may be unobtainable until the distant future, we've been learning more and more about wormholes. It seems they may be more stable and more common than we originally thought. There might even be a black hole that could be capable of transforming into a wormhole within our very solar system. And according to the final theory I'll cover here, any such time travel through wormholes or any FTL mechanism would be real and no big deal. In the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, whenever there is a random quantum event, like in the classic radioactive isotope decaying in the Schrodinger's cat example, all of the possible outcomes occur, but in separate, parallel universes. This is a hard concept to wrap one's mind around. If there are infinitely branching universes, why do we stay in the one we perceive? The sheer enormity of it all is daunting as well. It seems impossibly large. But is it actually any larger than the traditional notion of infinity? If this theory is true, it would completely eliminate the paradox of time travel. Alice could go back and save the moon, and then chat it up with Bob. She could even go further back and kill her grandfather. Although she would be having real interactions, these would be in a parallel universe. She'd be interacting with a past, but not her past. This solves the paradoxes quite nicely, but there's a big problem with this theory. We should be seeing all these universe-leaping time travelers. Where are they all? Currently, it seems we don't have enough information to answer that question, nor definitively answer any of the other questions pertaining to the peculiarities of time travel. Personally, I'm a fan of the Novikov self-consistency principle. If humanity is ever able to achieve FTL travel, it seems that human nature would compel us to use it as a time machine to get a glimpse of our past. I believe the Alcubierre Drive is possible, but we have not seen any time travelers from the future influence our present. This principle explains those observations. But what do you think? Do you buy into the theory that aliens and UFOs are time traveling humans? I'm very interested in your thoughts, both for and against. Please let me know in the comments. And while partial to the Novikov self-consistency principle, my mind isn't quite made up. I'll continue to look towards the skies with an open mind. And as always, thanks for watching Rather Be Squitting. Please consider subscribing and joining me in this journey.